How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's yet again Monday, which means it's time for an upload. Today we're gonna to talk about something that I'm pretty passionate about. Now, although putting with a putter is not something I would consider myself very good at, throwing putters for up shots and drives is something that I actually excel at relative to the rest of my disc golf game. I've always been pretty good at throwing putters and just having success with that strategy on the course, so I do it quite often. That led me to creating this video. So today we're gonna to talk about what putter should you be throwing on the disc golf course? Now, this isn't the type of video where I'm gonna throw a different a bunch of putters and give you one answer because everybody has a different disc golf game, everybody has different preferences. So what I've got is a selection of disc golf throwing putters that I think are great driving putters and upshot putters on the course. And we're gonna go through them, throw them out here on the course and try to figure out which one works best for your game. Putters that I've chosen here, I'm trying to find that slot that's kind of a do-it-all throwing putter. These aren't super overstable putters or super understable putters. This isn't trying to plug that specific gap in your bag. This is kind of the putter that you can lean to for a lot of different shots because I think it's very important to have in your bag. I'm also looking for putters that excel off the tee as well as for up shots. So I don't just want things that'll glide a ton or things that won't glide at all. I'm looking for something that does a little bit of both. I also wanna clarify that we're not looking for approach discs such as zones, toros, harps, that category. These are putters that have more glide, are a little less stable, and are more for throwing backhands with typically. Now, for this video, I'm out here at Randolph College. I've actually never been out to this course before. It's one of the few I've never been to in the area, but I came out here because all these holes are anywhere from 120 feet to 280 feet. So they're all very short. They'll be very nice for testing these putters. And what we're gonna do is I've got a selection of putters here that I'll show to you just a bit. We're gonna go through them. I'm gonna throw them off of every tee just so we can kind of get a feel for them, just so I can remind myself on how some of them throw. But I wanna make sure it's fresh in my mind. And then we're gonna make a pros and cons list for every single putter. I'm gonna give you a few different categories and just kind of lay it all out for you, why you should throw this putter, why you shouldn't throw this putter. And then you can make a decision based on what I, information I provide. Because ultimately, like I said, I don't know the perfect putter for you, but I'm hoping I can give you enough info on a really great selection of putters that you can find the perfect throwing putter for your game. So now to the putters, I wanna list off what I have here. Starting off, I have an Envy from MVP. I try to go across a lot of different manufacturers, as you'll see, and kind of just pick up some flagship putters that a lot of people like as a throwing putter. So I've got the Envy here. This is probably the most overstable of what I grab, but these things can be used for a lot of different lines. So I still wanted to throw it in there. Next, I have the Judge. This is a Judge from Dynamic Discs, one of my favorites for sure. Following that, this is a Star ABR from Innova. The ABR, one of the first putters ever popularized in disc golf and just a great all around disc. Probably more of these sold than, than a lot of putters out there. And I think these have won more world titles than any putter out there. Actually, I know they have. Then we have the P2 from Discmania, another popular throwing putter off the tee. Certainly one I love a lot. I did grab a Berg. This is one of the only ones I grabbed that I am not super familiar with. I haven't thrown as much as the others, but I know a lot of people like the Berg, so I wanted to throw it into the mix. I then have a Roach from Discraft, very popular for Discraft right now. This is a great all-around putter. And then last but not least, I had to grab this Cash from Hooligan Disc because this is currently the putter that I am using in my bag in this slot. Uh, now, it's new to my bag, and it is quite overstable, and I'll explain kind of why I like it throughout this video, but I wanted to throw it in there just because I gotta be transparent. This one is in my bag right now. This is my main throwing putter. So we're just gonna go throughout each hole. I'm gonna throw every single putter off the tee, kind of talk through it as we go, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give an exclamation around each putter, some pros, some cons, and then you can kind of decide for yourself which one looks best to you. Also, it's important to note, yes, there are a lot of popular putters I'm not featuring in this video, but these are ones that I really like and thought would do well. And disc selection be a little bit overwhelming sometimes, so I didn't want to give you too many to choose from. There is something that for everybody in this mix that I just chose. Apparently for this first shot, uh, we're just throwing a hyzer around this building. Pretty interesting, it's kind of like an urban. This campus is really cool, by the way. I've never been on this campus before. It's very historic, very cool structures and like really close knit. So I might get like a little urban disc golf mix. We're gonna start with the Envy through there. Just like that. No idea if that was short or long. Here's the Judge. Oh, I like that one. I swear I'm just gonna hit chains out of nowhere. Not the best starting hole for this video, just blind, but bear with me. P2. Of course, with these throwing putters, you're not really gonna notice a ton of difference on hyzer, but try to take note of which ones are biting more than others when you start them on hyzer. Like this Berg, for example, will probably bite a decent amount. 
yeah. That one wanted to go left pretty quick. Now the AVR should glide a little more. Much glidier. Now to the roach. That was inside. Finally, the cache. That's a pretty stable one. All right, now let's go find out that each one was thrown to like 50 feet because I have no idea. Okay, now that I'm down here, I have no idea how I didn't hit metal. I mean, I just scattered these around. Nothing too crazy to draw from those first throws other than some of them are a lot more anxious to get left on hyzer than others, but on to the next one. All right, this next hole is about 160, 170 feet away. It appears massive hill to the right, and there's some kind of interpretive dance practice going on down at the bottom of that hill, so I kind of hope I don't roll away because I don't want to get in the mix uh, there. But this one, we should be able to tell a little bit more about these putters individually. I'm going to try and throw them as flat as I can to start with. Whenever I have the opportunity, I'm going to try and give them the, the line that you would throw a putter on typically for the hole, just to try and keep things consistent. So we'll start with the Envy. Might end up switching up the order on these because I'm not going to remember which ones I threw in. Yeah, you can see the Envy has that really nice bite fade at the end of it. That is very typical of that disc. I will right, we'll go Judge next. Judge glides a little smoother out there. I'm telling you, if I don't get an ace today, I'm a failure. The P2, this might be somewhere kind of in between instability. That might be the ace. Yep. Off the cage. Ooh, this hole is brutal. See how much that skidded? Hope I'm not blocking the frame. I need to get out of the way. The Berg, this one can't roll away, right? That's what they say. Kind of higher with snap. I'll tell you, you can hate on the berg all you want, but that thing does like to get to the ground. The roach should be nice and straight. Oh, came out on a little bit of hyzer and was actually quite unforgiving there. It went, definitely went left. The AVR next. That disc is super forgiving and glidey too. Holy smokes. And last, we got the cash here. I yanked it. Come on back. Ooh, don't roll, don't roll. That one wanted to roll with everything in it. Starting to see a few trends here. Number one, those, there's a few discs that are certainly more overstable than the rest, that being the Envy and the Cash, I would say. Um, number two trend would be, I would say, the AVR and the Judge probably have the most glide out of that bunch. Now keep in mind, Glide is a blessing and a curse with a disc, especially when you're using it uh, off the tee or for approach shots. A lot of times you're throwing a putter off the tee, you're trying to land in a specific area. So don't just think more glide the better. You want to be able to, for it to go really far, but you also want to be precise with it. You want to be able to drop where you need it to. So sometimes too much glide isn't the best, depending on what you want. All right, now things are going to get really interesting because we're on hole three now. This is like 250 feet away. So, and if you've played this course before, forgive me if I'm messing up the teeing areas a little bit because there's no tee pads. You just kind of got to you disc it and hope. But this should be hole three straight away, kind of low ceiling. So we're going to really see how much these discs can handle glide because I'm going to have to throw them hard to get under the ceiling and get to the basket. So, and you're also going to see me have to throw some of these overstable discs with a little bit of Anheuser as well. So should get an interesting mix of results here. We're going to start with the Envy and see how that does. Left it a tad bit short there, but that's where the Envy really excels for me when you can give it those touch of Anheuser lines and you just get those baby flexes out of it. All right, now onto the Judge. Came out of my hand a bit early there. All right, the P2 now, I just gotta commit to this one a little more. There we go. Struggling to get it all the way to the basket with the ceiling. You see the P2, that, that one I gave um, a little bit of Anheuser, just like I did with the Envy, but it kind of fought out of it quickly. I won't lie. Let's try the AVR. This one should glide. Okay. So we learned something about the AVR there because I tried giving it a baby hyzer to see if at that power level I needed to flip it up instead of throwing it flat and not turning it over. 
but it held the baby hyzer. That's a good sign. A lot of times what you want out of this putter slot is a putter that will hold multiple angles and the AVR held that hyzer. Let's try the roach now. Oh, first one to hit a tree. <laughs> Came out on Anheuser, did not work out. Now the Berg. Oh, look at the Berg. <laughs> I'll tell you, I feel like Bergs, sometimes you get them and you feel like they glide and sometimes you don't. I think it's just in my head now because how much people talk about it, but like, I feel like I snapped that Berg really nice and it didn't, it's way short way short let's try the cash and then i'm gonna go grab the judge and the roach to throw them again give them a fair shot i oh, just early released it a little bit this hole is kind of tricky <laughs> all right i'm gonna re-throw the roach and the judge all right judge take two that was better that one was pretty close that was a decent one all right let's go roach now Okay, <laughs> see that's the danger of this hole, the way that fairway slopes down there. If you give a disc a little too much Anheuser and it's not stable enough, it'll just follow that hill the whole way down. That's what that roach did, which roaches historically are not super overstable. That one I wasn't quite sure on, starting to see what I was thinking, which is that disc is not gonna bite back like some of the others. Okay, we've made it onto the fourth hole now. This course is actually starting to heat up here. This is like a cool little downhill, perfect, perfect demonstration here couple things to keep in mind on this throw as we observe these putters. Number one, slightly downhill. How will the putter handle that? Number two, slight tailwind. Uh, how is it going to handle that? Uh, I might have, I'm going to have to throw this somewhat hard. This is about 250 feet. And also keep in mind, there's definitely theater practice going on down there. That's what it was. That was the dancing. Will that create more adrenaline? Will I overthrow the disc? Something to keep in mind. All right, we're going with the Envy first. These stable putters, I'm gonna try and throw with Anheuser and see if they can kind of flex out. Okay, a little bit of Anheuser to start. Envy, yes. Okay, Envy, able to kind of punch out of that Anheuser as expected. Let's try the P2 on the same line. I have my suspicions that this disc might be more stable. Good Anheuser, yeah, look at that thing level out. Wow, wow. Maybe not as stable after I just road rashed it, but that P2 is certainly, it'll dig, which, hey, it's predictable. It's good. On to the judge. This disc, I'll be throwing more flat. Okay, pretty flat, a little bit high, so it's gonna stall at the end. Hopefully I didn't lose that. Okay, the roach, I might even try now the roach we're gonna also throw flat. I'm gonna try and see if this disc will actually work its way left to right if I throw it flat. Yeah, might have had a tad bit of Anheuser. The roach is certainly more on the understable side of things as we work through these. And I'm gonna throw the AVR next because I suspect that the AVR is a similar thing. No, but see the AVR will level out. The AVR does have some stability. Let's see if I can like throw one near the basket, holy cow. Okay, Berg, still undecided on the Berg and what it does. I'll give it a little bit of Anheuser. Oh, I threw that great. Look at the Berg. Once again, though, like, I promise you that's the same amount of effort. I'm not trying to create an agenda, but that landed like 30 short. There's something going on here. I'm gonna finally the cash here. I didn't give it enough Anheuser. Dang, that hole kind of ate my lunch. A few things we learned on that hole. Number one. Envy and the P2 on the stable side of things, okay? The Roach on the flippy side of things. The Berg might not glide, interesting. Judge, it is what we thought it was. AVR, not a fraud, kind of stable. Cash, stable. All right, I don't wanna film this rehearsal, but I've narrowed down this theater production to either something Egyptian or Lion King perhaps, but the guy plucking the banjo is kicking butt right now. That's all I'll say about that. All right, hole five, pretty sick gap hole. You can see it just at the end of that tunnel. I'm gonna have to contain my excitement if I ace because I don't know if you can hear the banjos in the background, but I am right in the thick of theater practice right now, right in the thick of it. Unbelievable vibes right now on this course. We're gonna start with the roach. Oh my gosh, I thought I got it on the first try. Berg. Berg be landing short, folks. Envy. Oh my gosh. 
pretend that didn't happen. Let's try the cash. Apparently I'm trash at Anheuser Flexes. Let's try one more of those with the P2. There we go. That was beautiful. I'll tell you what, the P2 used to be in my bag for a long time. I took it out because it was a little bit deep. And it has a beautiful fight though, it really does. All right, judge. That might be an ace. Oh, it's not gonna get left. I actually went past the basket. AVR, I've got like different categories. I've got like my stable putters, the neutral, and like my really glidey and my not so glidey. That's like four categories. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm kind of falling in love with this AVR too. I mean, look at that thing. It is a point and shoot machine. Oh, right past the chains. Shout out Randolph uh, University soccer field. It's like dug into the ground. Look at this giant retaining wall. It like sits down in there. This campus is low key sick. I promise this is not a paid ad from Randolph Tourism, but I will take one. I gotta say the whole design here is like far more creative than I was gonna give this place credit for. This is kind of a fun use of property. Now we're next to the soccer field. I'm throwing a turnover right of this pole and that big tree in kind of in front of me there is baskets right behind it. So we're gonna try and throw turnovers with each disc. A lot of Anheuser, high sweeping turnovers. See how each one handles it. We'll start with the Envy. This is a shot that if you're somebody who likes a more overstable putter in this slot, you still need to sometimes throw a left to right shot with it. So you gotta make sure you can either get a disc that's flippy enough to handle that, or if you have something stable like an Envy, you gotta make sure you're adept at throwing a lot of Anheuser on the disc. Not all of us are, cough, cough, hunter. Here we go. I mean, look at that. That seemed pretty good. A misconception people have in disc golf is a lot of times they just think, oh, an overstable disc is not for a left to right shot. It's just not true. As long as the disc is not like excessively overstable, if you give it good angle and speed, a disc will glide left to right. And what you're doing is, it's just like the same theory of throwing a flippy disc to go on hyzer and push left because as that disc is flipping, it's working its way left and you actually get a longer flight to the left. Same thing with an overstable disc on Anheuser. If you throw something super flippy on Anheuser, what's gonna happen is that disc is gonna immediately wanna dive to the ground. You take something with more stability, it's gonna be panning out of that Anheuser while it's coasting right, giving it a swoop that's a longer left to right flight. It's a very fun shot. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with the, the P2 this time. Oh, I pulled that one so bad. That one I pulled, I got a little excited about that one. All right, now we got the Berg. Will it glide? Ultimate test. I'll tell you what, the, the best way to describe the Berg, it's like if you threw every shot nose up, even if you didn't throw it nose up, that's how the disc flies and lands. It's very weird. And I'm not even trying to be one of those Berg conspiracy guys, but it's just happening today. All right, cash. Well, I like that. I might go in. I think I hit the tree, so good shot. These last three discs here, I shouldn't have to force over very much at all, starting with the Roach. These ones should just take the Anheuser pretty easily. Yeah, that one, I could have given that a little bit more credit because it still is a pretty new disc, but um, if I had to throw one of the more stable discs on that line, it would have gone left immediately. Let's try this AVR now. This AVR is really impressing me so far. Love it. That's a fun disc, that's a fun disc. Last but not least, we got the Judge here. Should handle it, no problem. Yeah, so none of those discs had a, a ton of issue going left to right. Let's see if any of them got close. I've got some borderline, borderline traumatic news. So just prepare yourself, but that yellow AVR, the one that I was getting all excited about, the one that was potentially changing the way I thought about disc golf, I lost it. How'd you lose it, Trevor? I don't know. You see my voice cracked a little bit, I almost cried. Um, threw it towards those pine trees, pine trees gobbled it up, digested it, I don't know where they are. I threw the disc 150 feet away, couldn't find it, searched for hours. I actually started the search around 3 p.m. It's now 11 p.m., if you can believe that. So that's the story. So the good news is I did throw that AVR enough times that I think I got the gist of it, but take that into account when I'm giving my final breakdown. It may have been, uh, may have not have got a fair shake. Must apply that to our reasoning. Now, the, the next couple holes after that one I just played and experienced tragedy on, we're right in the middle of this rehearsal going on on campus and I actually was able to just catch up with a student that was walking towards the rehearsal 
and get a little insight. Apparently they're rehearsing for a Greek play. So uh, they're killing it, I'll say that. And also it's really nice to get like a nice wrap up to that kind of ongoing subplot in this video. It started out as interpretive dance to me. Then I was like, it must be theater. It's a Greek play. It explains why they're singing in Greek. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, all right, so I've kind of got a few safari holes left here that I'm gonna kind of make up and play to finish out this. And then we're gonna go into the lab and I'm gonna kind of run down each disc, what I thought about it. We're gonna break it down and you can decide which one's best for you. All right, I've got about eh, 200 feet, give or take, right down this hill. I also selfishly wanna get an ace on this video, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Envy, we're going with the Envy first. I threw that a thousand feet past the basket. If you couldn't tell, that was thrown way too hard. I'm gonna throw these all kind of hard because I haven't really aired them out yet. And I'm gonna kind of just run them at the basket hard. All right, this is the judge. It's kind of a laser beam, that was fun. Uh, cash. Oh, started on Heiser. P2. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. The Berg, if I can get it to the basket. Let's try, get the Berg to the basket challenge, impossible edition, here we go. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right guys, let's be fair. I'm trying to throw the disc really hard at the basket. That one just went higher and it makes you look kind of silly when you do that. All right, Roach. Oh, I ripped over on it. That's gonna hit the chapel. Ooh, fun little kick. All right, now that we are back in the lab, let's talk about these putters a little bit. And before you comment, no, this is not a basement. This is the lab. It says it right there. Thought I made that clear. So what I'm gonna do here is go over each putter and we're gonna just give a little bit of a sales pitch, but I'll be honest about each disc. So I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of each one. That way you can decide which pros are outweighing the cons in favor to your game. Because ultimately, no putter here is gonna be perfect, but what you want is something that complements your game and works the best for you. Some of the cons that I'm gonna list for the cons list will be potential cons, such as if a putter is beaded, that could be a potential con for you if you don't like a beaded putter, and the same would go with beadless. That could be a potential con. So keep in mind that not all of those apply to everybody, but they're just potential cons for each of these discs. I'm also gonna label the flight tendencies of each of these discs in three different categories. We have the tends to be overstable category, the leaning slightly understable category, and then the true neutrals, which kind of just fit right in the middle. Remember, for this video, I didn't pick anything that I felt was very understable or very overstable, but there are a couple that lean each way, so I'll make sure to mention that as well. Something to keep in mind is, if you're a player who likes throwing flat to Anheuser, a disc that leans a little overstable might work better for you because you're gonna get straighter flights out of it on your drives. And if you're somebody that likes to throw on Heiser, you might want something that leans a little understable. Therefore, it's gonna be popping up a little easier, getting straight flights that way. So that's kind of a way to think about it. So let's start here with the Judge. Uh, the Judge is one of the best in this category, in my opinion. It's definitely why I picked it. This is a disc that has been in this slot in my bag a lot of years of my career, and there's just not much to not like about it. Now, this is one that I would label as a true neutral. The Judge is not particularly overstable or understable. It really fits in that category because it will hold any line you put it on, and it does it with ease. With a true neutral disc, you'll find that if you put it on a line, it feels like that's the way the disc wanted to fly all along. A Judge, if you throw it on a hyzer, it's not gonna pop up a ton, it's just gonna kinda hold it. Same with Anheuser and same with flat. It's truly neutral, which means you can give it any line you want and it's gonna do that for you. Now, just because that sounds like a great sales pitch doesn't mean there are some downsides to a disc that is so straightforward. Uh, and so almost blunt with how it flies. The benefit of throwing a disc that is a little more overstable or understable is the disc's flight can forgive some of the mistakes you make in your throw. For example, let's say you tug your throw a little bit right, but because you have a slightly more overstable disc, it works its way back to the target. These judges will go exactly where you point them. So it is a great thing to have, but it also can be tricky at times. So I would say the pros for the judge would be a, it has tons of glide, glide to spare. 
B, it's not super deep or super shallow. It kind of fits right in the middle as far as the depth of the rim. So I think it'll agree with a lot of people's grips. And another pro of the Judge, honestly, is that this disc is offered in a ton of different plastics and varieties. This disc has been around a long time. Therefore, you can pick up in a ton. This one is in hybrid plastic. Um, I've noticed that typically they do fly pretty similar to each other, but some plastics may give you a little more uh, overstability or understability depending on which plastic you get. So that would be another pro because that's something to consider when picking out a disc is how many different options do I have in that mold, especially if you wanna try to minimize the molds in your bag. Overall, the Judge is something I would recommend to a lot of people, but I will give you some cons to the Judge because I need to make sure I give some disclaimers out there. Number one con, potential con for the Judge is it has a fairly large bead. If you're not somebody that likes a bead on the putter, then this disc isn't right for you. For those of you watching who don't know what I mean when I say bead, if you're newer to disc golf, that basically describes the little bit of plastic that goes around the bottom of the rim. It's just that extra little almost tab that sticks out. And what that does is it usually provides a little bit more overstability um, in a disc. And that is why you see them across a lot of different molds. It's a quick way for a disc to be added some overstability. One of the quickest ways that a disc gets understable is by losing that bead on the bottom there. And if the bead isn't there to begin with, it's just gonna get flippier even quicker because there's nothing guarding that bottom of the disc. And that is where a lot of the stability comes from. Another con I'll mention with the Judge is like I said, being a true neutral disc, it can be a little particular. If you miss your line with this disc, it's not gonna give you a lot of budge left or right. It really is gonna go where you throw it. Uh, and like I said, that's not always the best way to play disc golf. Sometimes you need the disc to do some work for you. But like I said, this disc, one of my top picks. Okay, moving on to the Envy. This is one of the most popular throwing putters out there right now, and for good reason. When you look at the Envy, this disc has a fairly low profile, a very, very small bead, if one at all. Um, it's hardly there. And this disc got very popular due to James Conrad throwing it, and a lot of the MVP players swear by this disc. And, and there are a lot of things to love about it. So one of the great things about the Envy is that reliable overstability, especially when the disc is brand new. You will get some forgiveness in this disc if you wanna pull with a little right or throw it with a little bit of flex. Uh, I would certainly put this in a category of leans over stable. That is certainly where this disc fits. One thing I will mention about the Envy though, and something that has a little bit of a learning curve with it, uh, it could be a good or bad thing, I'm not really sure, is that this disc goes very far. It does go further than a lot of other putters I've thrown. And what I've noticed is when I bag this disc, sometimes the first few drives I throw with it go about 50 feet past my target. And there's almost a learning curve to, to knowing that this disc goes seriously far. One of the great things about the NV2 is instead of dumping left, this disc kind of has that that flat, slow fade to the left when you throw it. It's a really nice over stability that isn't too harsh. And that's why I keep it in this category of being able to throw it as kind of a do it all throwing putter. If you saw from the video, if you give this disc enough Anheuser, it can hold it. You can throw multiple lines at the disc. However, I would recommend this only to somebody who's comfortable on throwing on Anheuser's because if you want this disc to cover a lot of different shots for you, you're gonna need to get it to do a lot of different things. And getting a shot or getting a disc like the MB to throw on an Anheuser line and hold that line, you're gonna have to set it on some pretty steep angles, but it can be done. I love this disc, um, but certainly, even if you are somebody who doesn't need this disc to do all the shots for you, if you just kind of wanted to fill an overstable putter gap, this can be that disc as well. So some pros of the Envy, uh, similar to the Judge, I don't think this one is too low profile or tall. It has a really nice, comfortable feel in the hand. I'd give it a lot, a lot of points for how comfortable it is to hold this disc. Another pro of the disc is that it is forgiving. It, this is a a pro, if you're somebody who wants a disc to do some of the work to the target for you, you can lean into this disc and you, it's a little bit harder to burn over or anything like that. And even on Heiser, this disc isn't gonna just yank left on you. It will kind of have a pushing fade to it. So this disc is pretty forgiving. Now, like I said, one of the cons of this disc is it's probably the most overstable of the bunch. Uh, either this one or the cash would be. So if you're not somebody comfortable in flexing your putters, if you have a little bit of a lower arm speed, this one might not be for you. That can certainly be a con of this disc. Another pro, just like the Judge, this one comes in a lot of different plastics. You can try them in baseline plastics as well, beat them into something straighter, and that is certainly always an option. 
But yeah, the Envy is a disc I would recommend to somebody like myself who really likes throwing putter shots with just a tad of Anheuser. Honestly, if you ask me to throw a straight shot, it comes out with just a bit of Anheuser and then Envy is perfect for somebody like that because this disc will almost immediately level out into a flatter shot and that makes it a really great option. So if you're looking for something in that leans over stable category, something that'll forgive you a little bit if you pull it, this is a great choice. All right, let's talk about the Berg. This putter still continues to this day to befuddle me, to just completely leave me speechless because I don't really know what to think about it. I've now thrown this quite a bit, not just in this video, but you know, over the last couple of years, a lot of people talk about the Berg and I still have no idea really what this putter does. You know, initially everybody was all excited about it because they said, oh, it doesn't glide. You can't throw it pa past the basket. I've, I've gone back and forth on that a lot of times because sometimes I'll throw it and I feel like it's going super far. But then you saw in this video, I was kind of struggling it to get it to go as far as some of the other putters. And what I've kind of deduced is I think this putter glides pretty normally throughout its flight, but I think at the end of its flight, it, it tends to drop pretty quickly and you don't get that forward finish that a lot of discs have. And I think a lot of that is due to the concave nature of the disc. Basically the way a disc flies is air getting trapped underneath it and continuing to lift it. And when you have a concave design like this, there's less space underneath that disc for air to be trapped and to keep it in the air. So this disc just gets to the ground quickly once it runs out of speed. And so I, I do see that point. I don't know if it's a one speed per se, but yeah, it's just an interesting one. I would say pros and cons of the Berg Certainly a con for me is the feel of the disc is a bit unique because of that concave nature. Some people will love the feel of this disc. Some people won't at all. Uh, I would say I'm somewhere in between, but I think that's a potential con for this disc. Uh, another con for this disc is that you do get some inconsistencies in runs. I have seen the, I've thrown some bergs that tend to glide a bit more or are like pretty overstable. And then you get some that flip up like almost right away. So I've just seen some inconsistencies there. I, I would also just argue that this is just kind of an advanced disc. It, it doesn't feel super forgiving uh, or easy to figure out. It, it just seems like a mystery to me. And maybe I just haven't figured it out yet, but I don't know if it's worth the time. There's a lot of great options out there. Now, I will say pros of this disc. When it is at its best, I do feel like it is a disc that wants to stop near the basket because it does get down quickly. It tends to hit where it sits. So there are some pros to this disc and it isn't as fast as some of the other options as well. So even if it isn't great usage off the tee, it is a good approach disc, but using this as just your do it all throw Swiss army knife of a putter, I'm just not sure this is a great option, but it is out there and it is certainly one of the more unique options to consider. So I had to throw it in there. Okay, the P2 from Disc Mania. So this was one of my main throwers for quite some time, an S line just like this. And there are a lot of things to love about this disc, but some things to be wary about as well. So if you saw this in the video, these are pretty overstable and that's why they gained popularity initially because you had guys like Paul Macbeth using these as their driving putters. You can throw these very far. They do go quite far uh, and they have that predictable overstability, especially when they're new. Uh, they, you can see that I threw a lot of Anheuser's. This was probably the most overstable disc I had out there. Maybe this or the cash. Uh, I, I kind of mentioned that the NV and the cash were the most overstable, but I forgot about this one. This is this one was very overstable. They give it a 23021 uh, for the flight numbers, but that just shows you how good flight numbers are. This thing is much more overstable than that. So I would say pros of the P2 goes very far, predictably overstable. Now let's get into some of the cons though. And one of the main cons is the P2 is a very deep disc. What I mean by that is it's quite tall. Uh, your fingers get trapped under there almost. So I found as somebody who uses this as a driving putter and power grips putters a lot, because I do power grip a lot of my putters for further throws, sometimes having a deeper putter makes for a tougher release out of the hand. It can get trapped underneath there and that creates some inconsistencies. That's ultimately what led me to taking the P2 out of my bag. I would say another big con of the P2 is you're buying an overstable putter. So in theory, that's what you want. You're falling in love with the idea that it's overstable, but it's a beadless putter. And this has nothing to do with the feel, but like I mentioned earlier, that bead gives you an extra layer of protection when it comes to protecting the stability of a disc. This does not offer that. And so what I've noticed with P2s is they can wear in very quickly, especially when I 
was throwing the Sky God P2s, they beat in way quicker than I would have wanted. And so that overstable flight that I was looking for went away kind of quickly. However, what I will say is these do beat into a nice, more neutral disc. So you love the flight of a P2, or if you love the feel of a P2, but not the flight so much, they can beat into a nice straight putter. Uh, so this one is a bit, I don't, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but there are some things to love about it. And a brand new P2 goes really far and is very stable. So there is a lot to love there. All right, moving on now to the Roach from Discraft. This is one of the Brody Swirl Roaches. The Roach is a disc that didn't have a ton of popularity until Brody started putting with it, to my knowledge. It's very similar to the Luna. I didn't use both of these in this video because I think they fly very, very close to each other. But the, the Roach is a really just classic putter, honestly. Just the shape of it, it's beadless. It is a very typical disc golf putter. This is one of the more understable putters that we have. I would say this is the first one, I would say leans understable. Some of the plastics you can get these in, they will have a little more integrity if you maybe buy the Big Z or a Crystal Roach, but anything baseline or even some of those Big Zs, they're, they, they, they tend to be a little bit flippier. Uh, you want to throw these on hyzer. They beat into good straight to turnover discs pretty quickly. And like a lot of that has to do with A, the beadless nature of the disc and B, just the way it's shaped. It's not a super overstable profile here. But the Roach is very glidey and very nice. I would say that one of the pros of this is it doesn't require a ton of arm speed to get a nice straight flight out of. It is easy to get hyzer flips and turnovers out of quicker than a lot of the other putters I went over. A potential con of this disc, I have noticed that roaches can be a little bit unpredictable and squirrely at times. Sometimes they're a little bit tough to dial in and figure out what the disc actually wants to do. It's like you throw it on anhyzer on certain lines and it gets really flippy, but then if you throw it on hyzer, it kind of holds it a little bit. And so it almost makes me want to think it's like more neutral, but I don't know. I've never quite figured out the Roach enough to bag it, but it, it is a, a choice of a lot of really good players and it does certainly work for them. I would say another big pro for this disc, it is super comfortable to hold. A very neutral profile, like I mentioned, not super deep either. Either fan grip or power grip feels great with this disc. It's just a really nice rounded shape to it. And another pro of this disc is it has a tremendous amount of glide, a very glidey mold as well. So the Roach is a really good one. I definitely would recommend this. All right, now we're gonna move on to the AVR. This yellow AVR was super, super cool. Uh, I actually hadn't thrown one in a long time and really, really enjoyed it. The AVR is a little bit overlooked these days with a lot of the Innova stuff not being quite as popular. And, you know, people started throwing some other discs from Innova as well, such as the Invader, but Nothing beats one of the first putters out there to really change the game. And this AVR was awesome. What I saw out of this was a ton of glide, a very comfortable flight, and it was a true neutral disc. This is another one I would say was truly neutral. You could give this any angle you wanted, hyzer, and hyzer into pine trees, really anything, and it would hold it. It was a great disc and a nice surprise for me. So maybe the AVR is the disc out of this batch that you hadn't quite considered, but you maybe should. And it comes in a lot of plastics too. All right, finally, I have this cash from Hooligan Disc. I swear I'm not sponsored by Hooligan Disc. It, it probably feels like it after these last two videos, but I genuinely put this in my bag because I would honestly say this is uh, kind of close to an Envy. It's maybe a touch more overstable. I think actually Hooligan told me they kind of feel like it's between an Envy and a Zone, and I maybe agree with that. But the reason I throw this disc is because it leans quite a bit overstable. I'll definitely give that disclaimer. I like to be able to throw a disc really hard and flat for a drive and know that it's not gonna turn over. I like to be able to give it some Anheuser because that's kind of how I throw it flat anyways and know that it's gonna flex out of it. And I like being able to just throw really hard hyzers with it as too. So this is certainly not for everybody when you're looking for a putter that will do it all. Because if I want to get this to do an Anheuser, I need to really give it a lot of angle. But for me, because I'm so comfortable throwing from that arm slot, that's just kind of what I work with. So that's kind of what I've why I've gone with this one. But I wouldn't recommend this to everybody. If you do like the MV and maybe you want a slightly more overstable disc, or if you're looking for something with a little bit more of a bead to it, then you could certainly consider this disc. But yeah, I made sure I threw it in the video today because it is what I'm kind of bagging in that slot. I, I'm, I haven't even decided if I, if I feel like it's too overstable for this kind of Swiss Army knife slot that I'm trying to advertise here, but right now I'm rocking with it and it's working. All right, that does it for all of our putters. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of walking through these together. I really wanted to make this video because I'm passionate about 
throwing putters. It's something that I've always had as a strength in my game and something I think that a lot of people overlook. If you ever go out and play a putter only round, sometimes you will have more success doing that than with your whole bag because it just eliminates the decisions. It's a very controllable disc. And if you can learn how to throw a putter well, they really don't go that much shorter than a lot of your other discs you'll find, uh, at least in my experience, especially if you learn to power grip them. But uh, throwing putters can be so great and so useful. So I really wanted to make this video to show everybody a few different options. Hopefully one of these putters really stuck out to you and you're looking to try one out. Comment down below if one of the putters really stood out to you and you're gonna decide to give it a try or if one of these putters is already one of the favorites in your bag and you love it, let me know. Uh, I'd like to hear from you on that as well. Also, if you could, please hit that subscribe button down below. I know a lot of you are new to this channel. Always be commenting and letting me know what kind of content you want to see next. I'm definitely taking everybody's input on that as we kind of shape what this channel is, but I've been enjoying the ride so far. The support has been so amazing and I really appreciate each one of you. I will see you next Monday with another upload. Um, and until then, rest in peace to that ABR.